sound file or something. Right. So it's recording. It should be recording audio as well. So, right. Sculptress here. So you go to import OBJ, find the mesh, temp base, and new scene. And no, don't go to paint because as soon as you go to paint, that's you. You're stuck in paint mode. Now my tablet doesn't work. Ah, oh, Christ. Come on. There we go. Right. Right, so we got this and uh, we just selected convert to triangles. Ah, oh, one. I, sh I guess I should subdivide a few times. Right, I think there's a problem because it's two meshes. So you might want to combine everything first. Uh, is there Boolean functions in Maya? I think it's that little, you see on the bar, uh, along the top. Just going to make that in one a bit and then. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, you double click on the button. Alright. Mesh. Oh, edit mesh. Edit mesh. Well, there's billions there, no? Union? I'll come down. Yeah, but I want it to be geometry based. Uh, Alright. Oh, we didn't click it. Didn't click it. Um, I'll do legs. How do you duplicate a sub mesh? Um, control C. It's not actually involved with it yet. Oh, yeah. yeah. Alright, I'll just do some quick legs. legs. I can do just one side because I, I can. It is a willy. It's a wonky willy. <laughs> there we go. It doesn't matter if it's not symmetrical because I, I can add that later. Right, yeah, God, I feel so supreme. I've got to lower them. It's a William. Yeah, Billy. Look, Dad, it's a William. It's like if your name's Richard, you're going to get so many dick jokes. Like, that's nonsense. If your name's Richard, you're going to get so much dick. <laughs> <laughs> There we go, I've just done a. Yeah, it's got massive arms there, right? The worst part is that I got both And I should just. I'm just going to make them like a little bit so I don't get any weird uh, things happening when I try and bully them. Yep, that's exactly it, man. Check that out. It's PlayStation Zero. <laughs> Classic. So Boolean Union, right? I think that's that's yeah, it. Yeah, it's Boolean Union, and I think there's a spot between them. Yeah, it looks all right. It's cool. It's done. It's done a welding job. It looks a bit. Yeah, it's probably a bit of a mess. It might crash or something. So we'll see. Yeah. I'm gonna do all sorts of crazy to it. So export selection base life. You might have, you might be able to find like a nice character base mesh online. To be fair, which I could just do, but anyway, I've done it this way. So import temp base, new scene. Oh, with more than four corners. What did it do? Nah, did new scene. I'll try it once again. Alright, and does something weird with that. Let me try. Uh, what have I got a base mesh? I've got a base mesh somewhere. Mm. 
Oh, Studio Ghibli. Ghibli. Yeah. Yeah. I should have I should have something like that on my computer actually. Let me just check. All right, I've got <laughs> I've got a character here. Remember the remember the one I did last time. So I've got I've got that I can use. Let's just go back to that folder and grab the the kids. The rest are actually used for like the number of characters for like three or stylized and maybe nine and stuff like that. Yeah, but there we go. Back in the dead, right? More or less. Right, so there you go. I've got a I've got a character here and that's my base mesh, right? I've already got the low poly version of it, so I've cheated. But basically if you make a low poly version and then you use that to make whatever you want. Then you decimate that, you can use the reduce button here, then you need to apologize that to make the low poly version, and you've got both, you've got your high poly that you've sculpted already, and your low. You can even then take the low back in and work on that one, but the thing with this sculptor is it doesn't have the project thing that ZBrush has to then build up to that same point. It's got a few. It's got inflate, draw, flatten, pinch, smooth. Yeah, yeah. So I'll show you. I'll show you what they do now, right? So first off, the main brush you're going to use is the draw brush, right? Uh, let's just change the size. That I'll use symmetry. So this little button does symmetry. So as soon as I click that, it's going to commit to like symmetry. So I'll say OK, and you get this weird line down the middle. Don't worry about that. That's just showing you that the symmetry's on. So wherever I paint on this side, it's going to do the same in the other. One thing I can do is this uh, detail brush. I can change the strength of detail. So when I draw, basically it's going to divide like this, kind of dynamically. So that's that's the real cool thing about ZBrush is uh, Sculptress over ZBrush is it does this dynamic sort of division where it needs more detail. So you don't have to like exactly like subdivide subdivide everything. Yeah. So all I'm doing. Uh, so ZBrush has just adopted sculptress mode recently, so you can do this now, and it's particularly good for doing like, like uh, sort of uh, pulling off like strands and stuff, because it divides as it goes and it just gives you that extra feel instead of stretching the geometry. You know? So what I'm doing here is I'm just using the draw brush. I'm tapping away, tapping away, and then I use the smooth. So if you hold down shift, and you just sort of just go over it again, and you can sort of keep hard areas that you like and lose other other bits. Right? So if you use Alt with the button, it goes in the way. So without Alt, with Alt, without Alt, with Alt, and then smooth. So it's mainly draw with shift and Alt as well. Yeah, shift and Alt all the, all the way, yeah. And if I want more detail, I can just increase that detail slider and get more detail there. Beautiful, beautiful. You don't want to, you don't want to go too high right away, so just be careful with it. Uh, and the way I work in ZBrush is I'm gonna, I would subdivide everything as I want more detail, but it does it globally all over the mesh, and you might not need it, so. Give them a little bit of a chest there, and then subdivide all, so everything gets subdivided, including the detailed bits. So you need to watch because that could end up that little triangle count down there could end up really high because you've already added detail too early. What's the perfect number? All right. So for the thing you finished, we're at about one or two million. Uh, but you, you. You know, on average, for any sort of object or character, that's kind of the highest you want to go in terms of detail, at one or two million. 
So just now it's at uh, 91,000. So it's not too bad, but if I divide, that's quickly, that's quickly like a third of a million, right? So, and I divide one more time. It's taken a while. And it's already quite high, and it's and it's causing a lot of lag. Look at that lag. So that's that's unworkable. So I'm just going to undo that. What's the button that does the opposite of that? So the button that does the opposite of that is reduce, and that's what you'll use. Once you've done all your sculpting, save it, save that model because that's your high poly. But then start to press this reduce button, uh, that's so cool. and that's going to give you a decimated version. You can re apologize Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. But this it doesn't matter. Um, you noticed what when I did choose to be uh, when was it? I did I did something. I clicked something it asked me it's gonna it's gonna turn into triangles, right? Because it, uh, I brought in a quad version. But as soon as you start using sculptors, you kind of like want to go into triangle mode. Right. It's all it's where all the it's where all the functionality is. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's triangles anyway, but it just this kind of just goes I'm organic triangles. Yay. Huh? Why did it actually do this? Because that's nice for um, deformations and animation stuff, and it's just clean. It's clean for edge looks. There's a benefit where you can make it stretchy, but right. you have to re recode the rasterizer if no one wants to do it. So they usually render the triangle. I don't want to be recording that rasterizer, man. It's too much technical information. <laughs> recording the rasterizer is definitely for the technical department. So. <laughs> don't, don't be a raster, don't get too raster with us. Yeah. So this is Sculptress free and uh, make your little low poly dude. Um, obviously you've seen that you'll have to combine them. It likes one solid shape like the plasticine model. So if you're going to make a base mesh just use extrude, extrude bits and like you call it inset. I don't know what you call it in Maya where you, you get a square and then you Again and it. All right. Yeah. yeah. Does that work? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Extrude strength and then extrude until you've got like a base shape. Bring it in here, and then as soon as you, I think you press something like a uh, subdivide, it's going to triangulate it. Uh, okay. So one of these. Right, right. Every, 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 every. Yeah. So, well, technically, you could just have one, say, one character from Maya, and then you could just have so many varieties, and then you could just have Basically, yeah, have a base mesh. Have a kind of like working jimmy that you just bring in, like bring in the jimmy, and then fix it up, make it whatever you want. That's spit that when you're finished sculpting, call that your high poly, save it, whatever it is, you know, uh, the Witcher character okay. underscore high, right? Then start using the reduce, bup, 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 bup. and you reduce it down to like this here, this triangle count. Keep it less than forty thousand. Forty thousand uh, for um for three D coat to perform well to read the baller guys. You can go as low as you want. Like I can reduce this right down to like some kind of mess. But what you don't want to do is consider that good enough to bring straight in your game. Yeah, it's pretty good because it even keeps a wee bit of detail here. Yeah. Well. Um, yeah, so I mean that's that's all right. It's kept some of the the finger detail there as well to some extent. Um, you know, you could always bring up the detail a bit and and draw on it. So when you draw it, it's going to add more. There you go. And then. You can even draw with reduce, reduce brush, and you can reduce it that way. See that? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good. I'm mean, like, I've, I've not used it productively, but I can see that actually it's got ninety percent of the stuff I use, and that in my mind makes it good enough. So brushes, go back to the list using the brushes. So let's say. Let's just divide it again. Mm, can't do that. 
can't do any sort of uh, alpha based brushing or anything like that. All it has is basic brushes like crease. Well, I don't know what crease does actually. I've never really used it. I think it. All right, it does like a little kind of. Yeah, a little kind of drawing thing. It's quite nice. Turn that wireframe off, you can see. Yeah, it's quite nice. Uh, flattens nice. Let's see how good a job it does with that. Uh, no, shift just smooths, so you see it can keep, it, it just shift, it'll just go and make it nice and rounded. But what I do with this is, uh, with shift is, I will draw. To get this, a similar effect, I'll draw, but then I'll just smooth one side, and then I'll go softer with the pen until I get to the edge, and it makes just like a nice kind of profile there. So then I maybe use like crease, and I'll, I'll get that more kind of defined. Uh, pinch as well, that will define it even further. So if I show you the wireframe, and if I start pinching, it's going to pull those together. I turn that off again. You can see that it's, it's made an even more defined, defined line there. Right, so... So that kind of detail. Again, if I draw and I bring up the detail and then I was to draw like... Uh, Nice nipples, right? What's going on there? Let's give them. Let's give them like a crazy. It's got a ten pack. Oh, it's crashed! Oh, it crashed! Too much power. <laughs> so save quite often. I'm quite worried. Make sure you shave often. Have yeah. a little alarm clock. <laughs> yeah, shave often. <laughs> anyway, so that was uh, that was uh, that was the warm up. So I, I want to see how I got from. Oh, oh yeah, save yeah. it. Auto save. Yes. That's how they know. That's how they pick the bug very quickly. Like we have a bug. Ah, uh, it didn't like it didn't like the ten pack. It was like it's ridiculous, Rob. Nobody's got a ten pack. <laughs> so that's how I like to sculpt. Sculpt a bit and then smooth the middle. Sculpt a bit, smooth the middle. Right. Okay, he's got a sensible six pack now. Uh, let's give him some I don't know rib stuff, some ribs. I just want to show you that. Let's add more detail so it looks nice and crisp. Where's his nipples going? Where's his nipples? Extra detail nipples. Oh, look at the detail in those nipples. Check that out. Oh. Whoa. Hold on. Oh, a bit smaller than that. Hey. Yeah, look at that. Look at the detail in those nips, man. Ooh. Right. Underarm here. No, I said oh, make him look. Ninja headband. It's going to cost you. I'll do it for 50 bitcoins. DLC. Are they worth anything? Fifteen. How much are they worth? Give me five. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Headband. Daniel's son. Wax on, wax off. And I can use that. Uh, one thing I don't like though is the, the rotation's not. The rotation's not right. Why is it not? Yeah, but it's. What, what's that? Rotate. Oh. Oh. Woo. Global. Oh, yeah. All right. That works for me. There we go. I just temporary, temporarily cheated because I want to. 
I want to use the pinch just to get the top edge of the band here. Make sure I get my de detail a bit higher. Use my crease and a wee bit in the top the other way. Let's turn that wire off just to check it. There we go. Right, I need to rotate them back. So rotate globally. So I'm using this little global button which rotates that rotates the whole thing. It's going to try and rotate the brush. Like let's rotate his nose. Rotate his eyes. Evil. Sad. Evil. That makes him like look pretty cool. Can use his ear. Twist your nipples. <laughs> right. Okay, so that say that's a high poly, right? So I'll just export that. Great job, Rob. Excellent high poly model. So one seven so that's hundred and seventy seven thousand for the high poly, right? This isn't the I'm gonna re top this guy. That's why that's why I use the reduce button. So desktop and what I do is I always give it his name, so I'll call it Punk Karate Boy or something, right? And I call it High Punk Karate. Yeah, okay, Punk Karate Boy. High. Right now, use that. Now that I've saved it, I can use the reduce. So I'll just tap this a few times. Let's watch that triangles count go down gradually. Do you know a way to like Call me Rob. Um, do you know a way to like um, subdivide triangles without making them like like blend the uh, surrounding things with these software? Because if you do that, you can actually like make a custom envelope or a default properly and have it just like in the shader, and that's like a lot of. No, no, it's not. It's never been in my workflow. I mean, I've I've been working this kind of shit for six years, yeah. and I've never had to do anything that. Yeah, well, professionally. But, yeah, I mean, I tend to, I don't tend to subdivide or stuff like that when I'm working. I tend to just make the topology that I need, yeah. then work from there. But you know, you know why I went when like the fill would be, because if you can actually do that, then in the shader, you don't have to send up all that data, you can subdivide it in shaders and speculations. And that will do it without the you know, the then you can have like 170,000... I mean, it's already done, right? You can use tessellation maps to control the amount of detail in certain yeah. places. So, displacements for the, the offset position, but then you can control the amount of displacement through a displacement uh, control map, in theory. Everything that bases displacement map it's kind of weird, and like Maya, I know it doesn't, like, it's something you would show me, do it a lot better, but I'm just saying, yeah, 2 pretty good. Do you remember the thing I was working with, the 3D? Yeah. The problem is nothing can actually do the map properly. So yeah. Run, make your own engine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for somebody making a new engine, actually, so. Uh, Alright, so we've got a high poly, reducing this guy. Or it's 60, 57, 42. So what, was, what were you doing before you were using your 3D? <coughs> I was a ceramic tiler. Yeah, I tiled bathrooms and kitchens for five years. Then I was then I was a salesman before that. I was top salesman for a couple of years running because I, I knew how to sell. I could sell dirt to the sea if I went to dirt to a rich man. Uh, and I was, but I did this as a hobby while I was working. For ten years, so that's what built me up to the point of all right. I'm going to yeah, yeah. I like three DS Max manual this size, <laughs> but I still never used it. I still just fucked <laughs> about. Computer background or not? No, I definitely get a computer background. I grew up with a Commodore 64, and I was programming when I was eight. Well, just basic stuff from the book. You know what? Okay, I'm just going to start printing on that. that's no, that's actually becoming like a tradesman was was kind of a way of getting 
what I wanted computer-wise, because I was like, all right, you need income. You always need income to buy the computer, to buy the software. That's where a lot, I mean, a lot of the stuff that I bought was paid through my Thailand job. And plus, I, I could work for like four days a week, because I was making like 150 quid a day in Thailand, but my fingers were falling off. I hated the job. My back was killing me. I'd be humping boxes all the time, because I'd never had any, any help, so I'd like, Carrying boxes into the house, buying all the you know buying all the material, borrowing miles away to get more material if I ran out, all the way back to the job, and then I had two jobs. I did like Chinese deliveries at night time as well, because I just needed the income. It's just not enough money. Like the the, the basically tiling has got lots of overhead. Sixty percent you're just thrown away back into the vehicle, fuel, maintenance, road tax. <laughs> Yeah, you break that but you come out with a bit of night. But then doing that job, you don't even have to change. I remember yeah. lifting like rocks one day and then doubling up my like my gains the next day. Yeah. You know, I've got to work Yeah, do the physical work. Like, work like I mean, I did I did a lot of kind of like weightlifting and stuff growing up, so I was already all, all right. Oh. And then then I worked at a tile shop, so we were stacking all the the tiles up like big pallets and moving tiles and the tr trolleys yeah. to put in customers' vehicles, and then. Then when I became a tiler, there I was putting them all in the van, taking them all out the van, going up the stairs. Yeah. Eventually, eventually I got help though. I had an apprentice, I employed an older guy, I employed my dad for a while, you know, just for help. Uh, but then it was too much. It was just like I had too much work. I was high demand and I just couldn't be asked anymore. I was like, ah, I just don't want to do this job. Yeah, well, you know, I landed on my feet, thank God, but it took a long time. It was like 2007 to 2012. I just walked in my portfolio and did the Thailand job. Five years, painful, you know, fingers falling off. But yeah, eventually I get good at this kind of stuff. Do you play through that teaching? Is, uh, yeah. It's like really fun because you're always in your doing the thing you love. Or would you say it's, it's, it's good like because kind of you're rehearsing and you're also teaching yourself kind of the right way to do stuff. So if you fall into bad habits, you're like, I don't want to teach these kids my bad habits. You know, I'm going to like make sure that I know what I'm talking about. As you come across people at belly and you'll be like, but that's not right. So like I've read this up and you're talking <laughs> you know, like you don't want to embarrass yourself. But I know I know like a safe amount of stuff. I don't know anything too technical for my job. Because no customer's gonna ask me, Do you know that this is gonna like make phones melt? You know, if you run this uh, kind of model past us, you know, I'll just be like, oh, I know that I've optimized it, I know I've used like a couple of textures. You know, I know that everything's working with it. I've tested it. Da, 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 da. You do the basic safe stuff. Um, and you learn the processes. And as soon as you understand them, you're like, cool, I can use that. And then the software, the software is the big thing. Find the software. You probably need at least a grand to get, you know, you might need 3D Core or Topo Gun. Topo Gun's another good free topology software. You will need to re topologize. You will need to texture bake. So you definitely need 3D Core or Topo Gun. And one more set tool bag. Might get away with stuff this, but you want to save up for ZBrush if you're going to be in character design. If you're going to be making like hard surface models, uh, like guns and stuff, you can get away with uh, using Max and Maya and just like uh, use subdivision. So you have a low poly version, make a copy of it, and then like subdivide the, the, the sort of higher poly one and chamfer all the edges, and then you can bake into the UVs and the low poly, and then you can bake all those nice curves and stuff. Uh, there's a few sort of things you need to know about that, like where your UVs go. You can have your UVs connected where you want, like if you've got like a surface like that, you're not supposed to connect your UVs there. You have to sort of split them. That way, the edge padding can deal with the, the bending of the normals at the edges. Otherwise, if you, they're connected, they fight with each other and you get a weird defect. There's not enough uh, uh, room for movement. It's kind of like little things like that. But with organic, you kind of want to keep everything together as much as possible. It's impossible. Still, when you do like the seam lines and splat up your UVs. Anyway, right. So I re -crunch, I've crunched this down to like twenty-three thousand. So I'll export that, and I usually call this the decimated. So punk karate boy, and I call it DEC for decimation. Just means it's crunched, right? I'm never going to use it other than to re-apologize. Uh, so 3D core. Where are you? Where are you? Go. So the first two bits of software I used was uh, ZBrush, which I had a pirate version of for a couple of years. 
and then I bought 3.5 for $500 and then 3D Co had an educational license of this and that was $80 when it came out. How much is this now? About 100 so it's not bad for education. Yeah. So if I, if I wanted like a normal license? Uh, I think it's 250 or 280, maybe 300. Let's say 300 dollars for the normal license. Is it, is it forever? Or? Yeah, it's forever. Oh, yeah. But it's one computer only. It knows if you're logged into two machines, so you kind of just have to use it in one machine at a time. But it, it's pretty great. And you get all the free upgrades and stuff. Uh, so that's basically 300 plus your whatever else you use. Right, so I'm going to use this perform retopology and then uh, import reference mesh because it's just a mesh I'm going to reference. And just go to desktop. And there he is, Punkarat Boy, decimated. So you see, he still looks alright, he's still got a lot of uh, detail there. And, and he performs okay, it's not, it's not lagging the software. One thing I tend to do is just click this cube to go into orthographic mode. Just kind of nicer to look at without that crazy background. And then if you choose quads. Yep. Yep. Uh, who's to say where it came from? You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, you're just you're spitting out a texture. And nobody can tell where that texture came from. So yeah, I mean, I used it professionally as a uh, as a built up, but then I thought, right, now I've got the money, I should really buy that. I mean, I'm still saving up for the 3ds Max because I'm stuck in the educational version. But to be fair, I don't really use it that much. 3D Max, you hire for like 250 a month. A subscription, 250 dollars, I think. Random question, doesn't it like question you saying if you can get part of your student timetable or something? For this one? Yeah. Uh, no, it just limits you. It limits you to 2K maps and seven layers. Oh, that's good. So it's all right, you know, and you can sort of cheat a bit and go, right, I'll use, I'll split the, the mesh up into four bits, you know, and do 2K, 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 and then put them in a 4K tip and then mock about the UVs. And you can even hack the layers by, you can the Photoshop and add some layers in Photoshop, save it, come back into this and you take yeah. the layers. So you can kind of. And 2K is kind of optimal because as soon as you start using 4K and 3D core, it's kind of crap. You need a really good machine. Uh, you can do, but it outputs target uh, PNGs and you can sync it with Photoshop, which is pretty cool for like just in the paint and stuff. Right, so retopology, boring bit. So points and faces is what I normally use, and I just work in one side. So you make a four points, and then as soon as you start to hover over this middle bit, it's like, oh, what are you trying to make? Are you trying to make this? Are you trying to make that? As soon as you click, it just draws it. Now, if you change the Z bias, you can get it to sort of appear to be further out, but it's not actually, it's just drawing it kind of a bit more foremost, right? And then you can add an additional extrusion. If I use that, you'll see that it'll push it. So, but I normally don't use that, uh, I just use Z bias. So I'll do really big polys. Yeah, this is this is where I, I place my rings. I'll, I'll place my rings first, actually, right? Just to show you. Uh, and I'm kind of aiming for a really low poly count here. Yeah, mid like or edge yeah, laying an edge, edge loops just on one side. Yeah. Uh, whenever I feel like it, pal. <laughs> About six, half six. Uh, I mean, basically, I'm here. Oh, this, this lesson, this thing. This, this one's just whenever I, I feel like finishing. Uh, but I'm, I'm here till half past six, roughly. I might get tired earlier because I got up super early this morning, and um, yeah, it's never good. So, yeah, that's cool. It's cool. Yeah, I mean, I'll I'll show this again. No doubt, it's one of those ones that comes up quite a lot, and I'll talk about the uh, important animated stuff to Unity next week. Yeah.
So what do you mean like how to get animation and stuff? Yeah, I'll get animation and stuff. Yeah. Once you've done stuff in Maya, bring in the Unity and just set them up. I mean, it's, 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 not that, it's not that difficult. If I press control, it automatically adds a little loop there as well. Control, and then it sort of maps itself to the body. So I can get like extra sub dibs that way. And then eventually sort of bring this round to meet up with something. Oh, that one looks good. So then now you're just piecing them together. Yeah, you can see how they became the same colour. Let's let's like them piece together. Is it possible to shovel the basics of ZBrush? You've got ZBrush? Yeah. You seen the sculptures thing there, yeah? I you watched it. <laughs> oh right. So you you're using ZBrush. They're using sculptures. He's got a pirate coffee. That is a wrong thing to do. I mean, whatever you get used to, you use at least learn a bit of sculptures and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and tinker, tinker with ZBrush. But you know, you might just be like, yeah. I mean, you, you can use what you want it, but it's got it's got more functions than you really need. I guess is the way to look at it. Um, it's highly functional. Let's add another one there. Eventually, it can come up to the head. At this point, I don't think I need much more than sculptors. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm just getting into sculpts now. I've looked back, you can do uh, You can do pretty free in there. Mm -hmm. Right, I'll just I'll add a few polys to the face so I can just show you the texture bait. You get the idea, you know, once you've made this, I don't want to spend all day retopologizing because it's a bit of a boring process. I'll just put a few polys in the face here just to show you the bake result. Remember, this is the decimated version behind it, it's not the high poly, it's just a rough version so we can retopologize it. You say the high version would crash the program? It would slow down and might and might even crash it. Depending on how it was, it can deal with a lot, especially in this kind of scenario. Let's just do the headband to some degree. And I can add another loop in there, or a few here if I want. Oh, the quad draw, right? Right. Let's just say that's it, right? I'll get the most of the details we did there. Hey, Andy. How's it going? Yeah, how's it cold? Still, oh. yeah. It's not as bad as. Ah. Uh, not as bad as. Uh, I can hear it in the floor. Just giving it to the college kids. Ah, uh, cool. Yeah. Fairly showing them some new quality stuff. And oh, great. Show them sculptures as well. Yeah. Yeah. You can get that for free. Mm -hmm. It's on the list. Yep. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The list of people going over that. Sculptures, yeah. everyone. No cracked versions of ZBrush. Like yeah, that. no, it's just these sculptures. It's great. <laughs> Or you can just crack the same brush. You need to speak to HR for <laughs> My practice uh, has expired. He's, he's enabled it for the day, but HR has not enabled it in the system so that it comes up for the year. Oh, so, that's what it is. Yeah, I don't know, because I know that it's officially signed in the contract, basically. I don't know if I need to, I don't know if you would know. I don't know. I actually need to. Make the ideal with them, right? But you still have to just stay down with your friend. I'm going to put an expiration in it. And this is the. Oh, we'll keep that out of the story. Can you send me the number? Yeah, yeah. And I'll have to send security. Yeah, I've got it too. So I might be able to send them and just take it. I've got it here and I've got it here. Want it? You alright? No. There you go. 
Oh, now we've got it back up here. Yeah. yeah. See with the face, are there any particular rules for everyone in ACI? Except for the. Find what it is. If it's going to be an animated face, yeah. You need to have lips here. Lips here. And then your lips from the nose go right around here. And then you get kind of like lips. And then you have like the lips yeah, and the ears, just to keep things kind of rounded and moving right. But there's loads of reference on it, on like this whole like correct face topology, correct hand topology. Only if you're doing something high end like the anime. Oh, if it's a low poly dude like this, you might just need to get the, the yeah, basic shape. You can go even lower than that sometimes. For mobile, you can just like, you know, just enough for the nose, the cheekbones and stuff, and then the little indent for the eyes. The mouth can just be flat if it's just going to be going on or whatever. But yeah, they're just rules, and they're a bit complicated to get into. Like, especially with fine reference on things like edge mode quality for faces, and it's like, oh, topology is good enough. You'll find them. There's ones you can download, uh, and just use them as a starting point. Even some of the stuff you'll find in ZBrush uh, of projects, they've already got the topologies, you can use them as reference. Alright, I'm going to take this to the UV stage, so uh, I'll export that as... Yeah, so imagine this was the full character because I can't be asking them a lot. It might take too long. Plus, I'm interrupted with it. Yeah, that orange So. Yeah, so I've exported it. Now I'm importing it, so there it is there. So that I can do the UVs. So I'm just going to clear seams. Oh, okay. oh you got it. All right, cool. And then I can mark in new edge loops where I want the seams to be. Right, so that's good enough. And then I click uh, unwrap. And that's it, it's done, done a basic unwrap of those. Just give me UVs. Right, so it's that island, that island, that island. That's what they call them, UV islands. And uh, I can even muck about with them here if I want it to like rotate them and move them and stuff. There you go, right. So I export that as the new low poly. And that's it. So Marmo set tool bag. Probably your best buy because you can present stuff as well. So if you've modeled something, you can present stuff in this and make it look really good. You know. Uh, so this is used for just to see now. Yeah, it's real time render. It's real time. You know. Yeah, move it around. You can even upload it to ArtStation as a viewer, like a Marvel set viewer. So you made something really nice. Put it on art station and people can turn it around and stuff. There's some amazing stuff done with it. Uh, so, what export? Well, uh, in Marmoset, it's called the Marmoset Viewer. Viewer, yeah, so you can export it as a viewer and it's like its own little module for web. And you can view it, but you can upload it to Sketchfab. As well, with your FBX or your OBJ, and you upload it to Sketchfab, and you can rotate it, and it's pretty good as well. All uh, right, so you import your meshes. I showed you this last time as well. 
but it just helps it sink in. Uh, so low poly and high poly. Low poly's got our UVs that we just did, and we saved it. And the high poly is the, the fill mesh, which we sort of did a bit ago. So I'm going to open those. Yeah, and that's give me both of them. So if I hide the high poly, there's the little low poly section we did. And there's the high poly we did with the, the nipples and the sort of rib cage and stuff. Right, so I make a little bread thing here, it's called a baker. I drag this low poly in there. Oops, let me just do that. Low poly into there, high poly into there. So they're set up, right? They're both set up. And you can see when I click on the low poly, I get this little cage that I can use. You can see where it starts to starts to encompass the high poly. So I go big enough like that. Yeah, get a good desktop, and let's call it uh, punk guy bake, right? And it saves it as PSDs. Yeah, the, the text is, it says it as PSDs for some reason, but you can change that as well. So, PSD, see. And then you just tell it what you want. So I just want a normal map. And just click Bake. And then as soon as I click P, I'm going to preview it and hide the high poly. And there we go, there's, there's what it's done. You can even see that little smiley face. So I can I can change the resolution higher, and also like the, the sample count. Sample count just means it's going to like pass a few times and try and find the best result. So 16 times and do another bake, and watch what happens. Now we've got even more detail. Uh, smiling nipple, uh, nipple smiling at you. Uh, that spam call again. <laughs> Hello? 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 Can you stop spamming me, please, you dumb knob? <laughs> yeah. Sick of it, man. Every day I've got three phone calls. Like, yeah, well, that's, that's my professionalism, isn't it? <laughs> I give their numbers to the charities, yeah. so they get charged for every time they call. They get three pounds charged, and charity gets paid. Oh, that's good. Cool. <laughs> oh, can you call me at this number, please? Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <Cheers. laughs> All right. So, so do you get the process? So I'll I'll quickly draw it. Right. I'll draw what you do. Because drawing what you do is always better. Right. I've drawn. Hmm? My drawing's good. How, when did I draw? Did I draw something before? Yeah. Uh. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So. It's the pen, man. It's the magic pen. I mean, I bought this like really elegant pen as well, so it's nice. Is that the new pen? No, it's, it's called a classic. So it's, it's a bit more like finer. But it's 60, 60 quid, and I've had this for about 10 years. No kidding. I've had it for about 10 years. It's probably the same nib and everything in it. Uh, I've never changed it. I'm just super light with it. Uh, right, so I'll show you the process in sort of drawing format. Yes. Right, there we go. Right, so step one, uh, base mesh, right? Base mesh. It's going to be your Jimmy dude. Right? <laughs> you won't have a heart, right? So you might want to separate his hands. Just so you can treat them as if you might want to separate the head. So I'll just do these little to say you might want to separate them, just like the neck there. You might want to separate the shoes, right? When you say separate, you mean you'll treat them as separate objects. 
but at the end of the day they're going to share the same UV space because you can bake more than one thing. You can bake, you can do a low high of the upper body, low high trousers, low high shoes, low high hand. But then you, you, can you can model them separately. You can model them separately, yeah. In some sort of way, yeah. As long as you sort of think about if they're connected or not, if they're covered up by something. So modeling the head separate from the body, yeah, but they're connected to the neck, so you need to watch stuff like that. Right, so base mesh, it's going to be not correct topology, but good start. Right, then you get to two. Sculpt. So you take this guy, your base mesh, right, and then you make him into a superhero, right? So he'll be like, sound effects and everything. <laughs> okay. Right, that's your that's your high poly, and we don't care about polys or we, we don't care about topology. Topology. So topology is the way the polygons are on mesh, right? Are they triangles? Are they squares? Is there too many? It doesn't matter, right? As long as the high poly sculpt looks beastly and godly, right? Then, three, is it called reduce or decimate? So decimate. So it's save. Oh no, save high poly. Save high poly, right? That's what you want. Decimate or reduce to less than 40k tries or points, right? Or verbs, right? So he's going to be kind of same detail but kind of like crunched down a bit. He's decimated. He's full of little triangles. But his shape is good, just like this guy, right? Then stage four. This is the pro way. Then stage four is retopologize. Logize. And then we take, we basically take this and make like nice, nice quads. Topology and the Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So trace, trace over with nice uh, quads or tries only and uh, you're allowed tries but only in certain areas that don't move very much. I don't want to write all that but only in uh, certain areas. Right, try keep loops. Try to keep loops. Right. Read apologize. Uh, then export. Then export. All right. Oh, there's a nipple. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. You can even do the little stick line and show the It's just it's, it's different depending what it is, but edge look wise, you know, if you've got your character here, right? Yeah.
All right, as you are. As you did. Uh, and uh, let's just say you want to have nice loops here. When it comes to this bit, you've got your elbow right and your arm like that. That's your elbow. And what you want is this kind of topology here so that this can expand and then this doesn't collapse it's, it's all going at one once at a point but then you want your then you want your loops here where the the flow is like it goes right round perfect uh, same with here it's a loop uh, you kind of want to have loops with the, with the eyes, with the nose, and with the mouth, and then round like that. Uh, it's hard to hard to describe it, but you want loops here, here, again at the knee, opposite from the elbow. You want uh, you basically want the collapse bit, and you want extra geometry here. And then back to your back to your loops. You'll see it if you look up any sort of correct topology for elbows, knees, finger joints, face topology. If you find any reference, you'll see exactly how to do it. Um, and then the ankle, the, the feet tend to be kind of funny. The way I do feet is. You have your topology up to a point, and you'll be like, okay, where do I go now? Some stuff goes down the way, but then some stuff kind of like goes round, and you're like, okay, I've got this, I'm going to have this pole here. A pole is where like more than four points meet. Well, it's where all the points meet, basically, but you're going to have this pole where it goes like that, and you've got this five point pole. Don't worry too much about it. You've still got your quads everywhere. This loop's going to go that way, this loop's going to go this way, and this loop's going to go that way. So you just have to bear in mind what way your loop's going to flow. And then front, if you're looking at that front on, uh, just try to draw, I think how to draw that foot front on, I guess. Like that. And then you're going to have like, the kind of like split there. That's that sort of thing. Well, it's Spider Man, right? Yeah. Exactly. So it's just like, I mean, you can look at Spider Man, you get topology right there. It's a bit weird though, right? But you get some sort of idea. It's just like a lattice, but you have to think where's, where does these kind of things happen? Where five points connect? Keep them in sort of inconspicuous areas as well, or areas where it makes sense because the flow changes here. You've got the flow going this way, and then you get the flow going this way. And then all the way down the leg to this point, you can see how it continues through each polygon. It's basically looking for like the direction of you know connected polygons. As soon as that hits a triangle, it's going to be like, oh, I don't know what way to go, so I'm just going to stop there. You know, so you need to watch triangles in certain areas because it will interrupt like maybe like your edge flow. So you've got like a triangle here, and you try to add an extra loop, it'll probably just stop at a point. And you have to fix a few bits, but don't worry too much about it. Just try and keep your loops, uh, your you know, certain areas, your neck. Uh, you want your flow to go like up and down here, across here, across here, and then the arms. And then like you kind of want the flow to go up the arm to a point. You might you know, it's, it's where the body connects. You end up with this kind of thing. But as long as you try and keep your your quads, you can still have these kind of five point poles but then carry on your you know carry on your topology you know that's going to flow up the way down. yeah exactly it's going to flow that way so that's like topology sort of 101 anyway so once you've done your retopology you want to do your UVs so you retopologize export that low poly but it's not got UVs yet, so bring it back in and put your UVs. 
and then unwrap those, make sure everything's fine, and then save that back over your low poly. And that's you now got your high poly skull, separate thing, you don't care about the quality, you go quite high with the poly count, 2 million, 3 million, whatever the data can handle. You handle quite a lot, depending on your machine, but 3 or 4 million. Um, you might want to make things like and it's separate bits. So if he's got a weapon, you do that as a completely different thing, right? Maybe if he's got like uh, accessories, like hanging things, do them as little separate objects. Call sub tools and, and ZBrush, but you might call them sub meshes or elements or components. Uh, just call them in Maya as a component. Without like the skin cutting through, you might have to lose a bit of the base mesh and call it a whole new mesh so that you don't get cut through. A bit tricky. But anyway, so with the, with the beads thing, I'll do something really obvious. So I've just got this top view. And what I was talking about is do like a box, right? Uh, let's make it a bit longish. Uh, put some divisions in there. Actually. Let's do something like that and then do a bend on it. Yeah, this is this is my sorry. Right. Let's just say that's gonna be like a chain. Right, let's do a quick unwrap on it. Uh Right. So, if that was just going to be the chain of a character, and you're going to have like your character here somewhere, you know that this is going to roughly going to be about that size, right? And you're going to have to move it aside somewhere in the UV space. So that's going to be the low point. I'm just going to check its pivot as a zero. I'm going to reset them to zero. Right, so that's at zero, and the blue is pointing up the way. That's fine. Unless, I mean, I might want to correct the pivot in this case. You don't have to do this in Maya, you have to do it in Max. Do that. Right, so that's the low poly version. Uh, one thing I want to do is give it all oh, one smoothing group. That's what you call the, this, I think it's called soft or harden in Maya, but it's basically so it looks like that. It needs that for the normal maps to show up, right? Uh, okay, and then I'll call that like chain low, right? I use it to do a capital L. Uh, and then you're going to have your beat things. And they're going to pop through a bit like that. I'll just make that see through. And then just manually place them. I could make them go along the path or whatever, but this is fine. Right. Uh, for quickness, I'll just choose these and do an attach. The coin. Uh, I'll align the pivot to be the same as this orientation and scale and everything. Yeah, just to be the exact same. Okay. Uh, I'll do a symmetry. 
the other side and I'll just attach that last one uh, what go? Attach. I think that's the same as what combining your meshes right so we've got that right it's rough right that's going to be your chain high chain let's go high so chain low and chain high as long as you use the same naming convention for everything like the same case as well as case sensitive then I can basically export these two meshes um, separately I'll do export UVs are important remember your UVs everybody would probably forget that UVs I'll just do uh, you can do FBX is fine so chain low chain underscore Sometimes I use like a batch exporter. If I've got loads of stuff, I'll just batch export. Smoothing groups is important. Uh, triangulate is important. I think I normally have these ones selected. You'll get them in your FBX settings. You don't need animation. You don't need animation or anything. You don't need to embed media. That's it. It's just those one, two. So miss one at the top. And those two bottom ones, <coughs> four things, and the high poly. Support that's chain high. Right, so we'll go back into this. I'll start a whole new scene. A uh, new baker, and I can do like. Uh, load the quick loader, so this quick loader is great if you've got loads of low poly and high poly stuff. Since we've only got like two objects, it's fine. I can just load the two, uh, these two, I'll just click both of them. And what it's done is automatically put them in a little baker group, its own little. So if that was loads of stuff like chain, a watch, the body, uh, each have its own little group within the same baker. That means they're going to be spat out to the same one texture. As long as their UVs don't overlap, right? Because if you put UVs overlapping, that's where the mess up happens. So, what you need to do is organize all your low poly stuff. So, once you've got everything re topologized and all the UVs done, you need to reorganize them so that they're all got their own space, their own sort of scale that matches. I usually put like a checker and stuff. So you can see how big or small the checker goes. So when you change the UVs, you can see how much density it gets. Like, I'll show you real quick what that is. So you can use like a checker texture, or just use like checker. I tile it by 80 by 80, and I'll apply it to mesh. So you can see, you can see that's the kind of density it's getting. In a logical term, so I could go to the unwrap and say, okay, I want it to have more. Then, basically, if you imagine these are the pixels, that's how many pixels more it's getting. But it's a lot more than that, right? I'm just done it at a low rate. But the smaller it is, the less pixels it's getting. And you need to keep it kind of like, uh, was it unified? Otherwise, you'll get stretching like that, or like that, which is no good. So you need to keep it unified to the the squares stay, they stay quite square. Right, so I'll just cancel that just because we've already UV'd it. And this is the low and the high poly loaded in into that folder. We've got a low there and it's reaching out to hit the high. So now I just need to tell it where to send the file, uh, which is here. And I'll just call it chain bait. And what it does is it makes uh, an underscore normal underscore AO underscore coverage. It just creates like your different maps. So I'll do, I'll just do normals, and then do bake, preview, and then hide the high. And you can see what it's done. As it's tried to obviously make the spheres. It's obviously kept this, the the shape of the low poly, but it's tried to make these sphere things. It can't. Yeah, because you've defined that already. Now, if I was to go back in and say, right, I'm not happy with that, I want it more detail, I can go back into Max, basically, 
and go right. Give me my, my geometry here and go right. I'm gonna put little loops in where these are. Put a loop in there, loop in there. Well, it's still gonna project the same. Uh, you, just, you just wanna define. I mean, I could shrink the whole thing, but I wanna like make it bigger where the beats are. So it's kind of like that, like a. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So then I could take that and shrink it a bit, maybe move it there. Oh. Move it to there. This one I'll increase. And you see it's mimicking the shape a bit better, but at the expense, at the expense of more polys. And rotate that bit as well. Uh, that one I'll just get rid of. That one I don't like that point, so I'll just move that there. Uh, start getting a bit closer you can see it's quite, quite angular but it still deals with the light really well so, you know you can make it really glossy and it's reflecting the environment quite nicely so compared to that I guess it's a bit different but that's basically that's what you're doing you're making a low poly version of the correct UVs and then baking it from the high poly and you're getting the, the, de the detail from the high poly. So uh, even if I was to like, I'll show you another little cool one more thing. So I can take the high poly, right? I'm going to turbo smooth it to get more geometry. It's just subdivide. And I'll add a noise to it. Let's see, fractal noise. But scale. Alright, noise. Alright, yeah, something like that. I'll do another smooth and relax. So that's now 170, 170,000 points for that. Uh, just collapse all that to one mesh. So, okay, and then export selected as the high poly again. Again, it just updates. So updating marble set, but I need to just tell it to do the bake again. So let's do bake. Preview. It's done it. Uh, high poly. Ah, oh, it's doing it right. And then hide the high poly. So I preview. So high poly, low poly, bake. There you go. So it's called that detail. Let's hide the high poly. So it's inherited all those little ripples. It's trying its best, you know, with a mesh shape. I can then also go back in, if I want more detail, go back in uh, the low poly and just subdivide it, I guess. It's not, it's not kept the shape, the shape too well though. Uh, yeah, it's not kept the shape too well. I don't know, maybe... Yeah, I could... Yeah. 
and just add more inputs. Yeah, it's not an easy way to do it. Um, there's a way to make it change shape based on the other one. Anyway, I don't know. I'll try and export that. As the low. Oh, it's low, but it's a bit higher. And again, yeah, it looks looks crap, right? <laughs> it's because it's it's no longer like more like the shape. It updates, but it doesn't bake it again. It just yeah, it just inherits the old bake, so it's not quite accurate. But you can see it's getting closer, right? And then you can take that and you can like you can color it and stuff and. See what looks with different colors. 